Hello and welcome to another episode of Sense and Rant. On today's episode, I am joined by my friend Rachel as we explore the topic grief. I hope you enjoy it. All right, Rachel, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Rachel Wanogo. I'm a writer, content creator, jack of all trades, basically, when it comes to creating and selling markets. So. You still say selling markets. What kind of market are you selling? <laughs> <laughs> selling style, fashion, oh, oh, beauty, reading, personal development, basically things that would improve our lifestyle in general. So mm. Mm. I tend to create those kind of um, materials and I blog about my life sometimes as the spirit leads. Um, yeah, I think that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> I'm also a podcaster. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, I'm a movie lover. I love podcasting um, about movies. I've not been consistent, but <laughs> that's You're doing something it, I do on, the, do on the side. Yeah. So, okay. Well, tell us any of your, of your podcasts so you can check it out. So um, my podcast is called The Rated Ritual Podcast. Um, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to music or podcasts. It's basically there. So okay. you can check it out and drop me a review. Let me know how you see it or what you think about it. <laughs> For sure. I also have I a YouTube like channel. To... Yes. Yeah, I'll drop your I'll drop your links in the description box so they can check it out for sure. All right. So today we're talking about grief, which is a different topic compared to what I'm always what I always talk about. So let's talk about your our childhood and how we were raised when it comes to grief. I think for me, I was raised to understand that grief is only for when you lost a loved one. And Mm -hmm. growing up, that was like your, your grandparents, you know, your grand, your adopted grandmothers who were Mm -hmm. the the women on your street, the aunties and uncles. Um, And, but like when you do something or when something happens to you, like you lost your money or you lost a pet, right? Mm -hmm. People would say like, stop crying, don't cry. Why is that why you are crying? And like, I feel like, that for us like at least for me it changed it gave me permission to mourn some things and not to mourn other things what was that like for you i mean as a kid you always have this illusion of things are always going to be fine especially for me as a kid i had this happily ever after mentality like i love things ending well Mm -hmm. and I remember when, um, before, so there was a time in our lives when we used to live like outside the country, we didn't used to live in Nigeria and everything was just fine. Life was good. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved back to Nigeria, things basically like transformed. Mm -hmm. And I I remember very vividly that we, so I'm going to be sharing some very vulnerable things here. So, (laughs) um, I remember very vividly at the time that I didn't know what it meant to live or grow in an unhappy environment. Mm. And I think things started to change when my parents um, separated, in short, before the separation, because um, we experienced um, the conflicts that they had, mm-hmm. the arguments, and it was such a stressful situation mm. for a child to experience. And um, growing up in that kind of environment, you're just feeling like, is this how, why is our family like this? Why are, aren't we different? And I remember the time when we, as at the time when we moved back to Nigeria, so our dad enrolled us in boarding school, which is where we met actually. Yeah. And um, I remember very, very clearly that when we were going to school we're in the car my dad had, had our mattress in the bed and everything was just you know we just felt like we're going to a new place where our parents would be there mm-hmm. and all and I've always had this feeling of I didn't want to be left alone like mm-hmm. I don't want to be alone without my family yeah and I remember that after my dad dropped us at school at the body institution and he left and we just turned back where is that <laughs> where is he <laughs> where is he and I remember crying so hard. I've, I've, there was this overwhelming feeling of sadness. A lot of people think that, oh, yes, it's just, I mean, it's, it's supposed to build some sort of resilience. Mm-hmm. And it did. But yeah. um, I was five years old at the time. And 
at such a tender age to experience that kind of separation from you know the people that you've known all your life mm-hmm. it's it's traumatizing and yeah. when it comes so the grief in itself is not just limited to when you literally like lose someone it could be as little as maybe even failing an exam an exam yeah um i remember strongly and when i was in um I think when I was in the primary school, my dad was always emphasizing on us doing well in school. Mm-hmm. And there was just mm-hmm. this element of fear, like, ah, we need to do well. We have yeah. to do well. If we don't do well, um, yeah, hell is going to rain. And um, when, I, when I was in secondary school and I had to repeat a year, I remember mm-hmm. I felt like the world was crumbling down Fresh, on me. I yeah. felt like I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. a different... It was... A different kind of grief for me at the time. Grief. I felt like the, I was finished, like I was done for, like this yeah. is the end for me. That like maybe I should just jump, you know, go and kill myself or go to mm-hmm. Mary River. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah. drown. And you know, as a child, you have all these things, all these thoughts going through your mind, but there's nobody else that you can actually tell it to that tell way, to, way yeah. I feel at the time. And of course, you also have um uh peer pressure to do it while you're in school. You also have your teachers to do with in school. Mm-hmm. So there are all these little layers of frustrations that is, is grievous to you as, yeah. as a child. And I think as a child, those, those were like my first, my earliest experiences with um, grief, with grief. Yes, it, it was mm-hmm. such a devastating time for me. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it, was really, it was really painful and really hurtful. That's interesting. So I, I mean, also I came to Mayflower School, but I think I was like nine or ten when I came. Mm. So I was much older than yeah. you, obviously. Um, I don't know if I actually mourned my parents dropping me. Like I wasn't. I grew up with that. Why are you crying so much that I just hated to cry, like in front of people by mm. myself. I literally hated to express any form of emotion that might make me seem weak to people or that I was not strong. So it just was. It was never my thing. So when we got to school, boarding school, Mifla and my sister would like sometimes, you know, maybe cry. Just, why are you crying? Like, just suck it up. It's always mm. a question that keeps mm. ringing in my head. And for the longest time, I never cried. Like, never. No, when I lost my uncle. No, when I moved from Nigeria and left my family behind. Not when I had to change states. Even within Nigeria, I never cried. I just, it just was me. I think... <laughs> Yeah, grief is grief is interesting. It's 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 quite amazing because, you know, living home at that tender age, you are just feeling like okay, I need to, I'm on my own right now. I'm on my own. You need and to grow. if you show any sign of weakness, people are going to take you for a ride. Yeah. So you try to you're not necessarily a bold person, but you just yeah. try to pretend to be bold so that nobody's mm-hmm. going to you know make you feel inadequate or make you feel insufficient and i i think for the longest time and even it's it's it now that i'm older that i'm trying as much as possible to unlearn certain habits that i've you know imbibed and developed as growing mm-hmm. up because sometimes i'm angry and upset about something and i just want to cry because i i see myself like i'm a, i'm a very very emotional person but something I'm supposed to be crying about just before me tell. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you're just trying to like, no, nobody's going to see me cry. Nobody's yeah. going to see, see tears in my eyes. And I, I feel like, so I'm a Christian. So I think when I got to that stage of my life where I started to make, you know, personal faith-based decisions on mm-hmm. my own, I then realized that, okay, I mean, it's okay to cry. It's okay it's to, cry, to yeah. feel overwhelmed sometimes it's okay mm-hmm. to let the tears flow I know. and it's not like a river <laughs> now like if i if something hurts me really deeply like the tears are flowing and i remember even during the course of my masters uh when i got really really like frustrated with um school work i would lock myself in my room i'm screaming at the top of my voice i'm crying like serious wow. tears but yeah. when you come out into the world People don't think that you have, yeah, yeah. have those moments. They feel like, ah, she's so strong. Please, yeah. I'm not that strong. <laughs> I'm not strong. <laughs> I, somebody actually listened to a podcast. I think it was Chema's podcast, um, Are You Me? Mm-hmm. And she was talking about how people should please not call me strong because she feels like being called strong is just a way for people to come and dump their shit. 
mm. all on you and just you know dump and for the longest time i was always oh i was always that person that let people dump everything on me and just like oh you feel sad come talk to me you need help come talk to me and i still do that but now i have boundaries like i literally i i have so clear boundaries that even if you cross that part i'm, I'm literally telling you get out mm. of my space get out of emo my emotions you know um but of course it took me on learning a lot of things and number one thing i had to do was give myself permission to actually like, cry cry like feel my feelings um when was the first time i can say like as an adult, I cried and I felt like, oh my God, this is it. It feels good to let it out. Mm -hmm. It was in 20, 2018. I was supposed to be moving to Virginia to start a new life and you know, go for master's. The plan was to get my master's in Virginia, go to New York and you know start this whole filmmaking thing, right? But there was something that I missed in all of this, right? Um, I'm in the military mm -hmm. and I was... I was in a training to become an officer okay. and literally it was, I think the training was like 16 to 18 weeks, weeks long, months, sorry, weeks, <laughs> eight, uh, 16 to 18 months long and two weeks before the end of the training, literally nine days before the end of the training, I failed the last part and I got oh kicked out of the program. Oh my God. That was like literally frustrating. And the trailer wasn't even in my home state. It was in a different state. So I had to get on the, I think the, the fact that I got on the flight mm -hmm. gave me time to like actually think about the failure and feel the failure. Mm. And I'm telling you, when I got to my room, like for the first four days, I don't think I did anything. Mm. Like I just like laid in bed because I was exhausted. Like I was that tired. But when I brought my, when I had the, the time or the strength to be able to tell my friends because they were supposed to fly in and come celebrate with me mm -hmm. and do this and do that. Um, when I told them, I remember like sending it, I couldn't, I couldn't tell them what the phone. I sent the text, like the group chat to, so I don't have to keep repeating myself to people. And of course, people will want to like call you to understand what happened, how that happened. And I just, I didn't want all of that. I just like sent a text that, you know, you, get, you guys don't have to come anymore. This happened, do whatever you want. And I went into the bathroom. And it felt like the moment water was pouring on me, I was pouring myself out into my tub. Like I was literally like a puddle. So like my energy was matching the water mm. that was coming on top of me. <laughs> like a dramatic out. effect. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh. When I say like I wept and I was shaking, literally, I've only had that experience maybe two or three times my entire life. Hmm. And it was just like, okay, now that I've let my emotions out, I'm not talking about 10, 15 minutes. I'm talking about longer than that. Yeah. Like literally longer. Um, then I had the strength to call people. Then I had the strength to tell people. Um I don't know what what has been your most well not your most traumatic but one of the experiences that defined how you let your emotions out. Hmm, that's a that's a very tough one because there are several several like oh, instances yeah? several, but I think so. I talked about uh, myself, like my family, my parents being separated, and I think that was like the first my first experience with painful memories that sort of like at some point when you're as you're growing older you're like why is it why is it that you know daddy and mommy didn't work out mm -hmm. i mean look at our family friends right yeah. i mean more than mommy and daddy it's supposed to be mommy daddy and, and the kids not and mommy kids, daddy yeah. and then daddy's girlfriend and some other people like it was just yeah. a very very strange um thing for me and, and usually when i tell people that oh um we i have like other like half sisters and half siblings like really like they don't usually believe because they feel there is this type of way that people that come from large families is supposed to behave yeah. um but i think another experience that i had um when it comes to sort of like expressing myself was was when I was about to get into uni so that was when I was about to step into my first um degree mm -hmm. and you know when jump jump you i did my first jam like it was fine like it was okay but um 
I think after the post CME or something, they gave me a different course. Mm-hmm. Yes, they gave me a different course, and I didn't want that course. And um, okay, no, I think first, no, yes, they gave me a different course, and I was really, really frustrated about it. I remember I was in tears. Like it was, it was, it was so frustrating because it, this is the second time something like this will be happening where my mates are going ahead and me, um, you're staying at this back. point, mm-hmm. and I, even at that time I've always had this fear of being left behind. I've never ever wanted to be left behind because there's this stereotype that comes with it. Oh, your mates are there. You, you are here. When yeah. do you have two heads? So there's always this constant fear that comes with failing. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I remember very vividly that I was, I was, I was so sad that I didn't get into the uni- university that year. And I remember praying so hard. I like, God. <laughs> <laughs> do wonders next year you're going to do this for me yeah. and you're going to i'm going to get my course i'm going to you know it's going to be an easy process for mm-hmm. me and that was exactly what happened it was easy and i think i feel like when that moment happened i became more okay okay fine i think it's okay for me to sometimes like let my emotions out let myself cry another instance was during my nysc so I had this project that I was assigned to do and okay so we're supposed to raise money right in the space of like three months and the thing about me I like taking on very big things with like I feel like sometimes if I do big things it would challenge me to shake me a little bit I like taking things that would shake me and (laughs) I remember when I started doing that project it was it was to revive a library in the school that I was serving and a lot of people didn't know about it and that was one of one of the challenges i also have like i'm always always a bit skeptical about asking people for help you know i just Mm -hmm. feel like because if somebody tells me no i'm like oh god why did i ask because i don't want to be rejected and you rather so wait wait you rather not know yes what the answer will be then ask and get a no exactly so i I remember that like it, it it was really really scary for me doing that project and i remember on, on there was one day it felt like i was i was supposed the launch was coming up i think it was mm-hmm. about two days or three days to the launch and everything we're we're near we we're, we're not halfway done with the work and i was just like i just sat down on the floor i was like this is it i'm done and like i was totally frustrated and i remember my lgi called me and he said didn't you say you want to do this? I said, yes, sir. Then, then let's go ahead and do it. Then I'm going to tell um, the lady who was going to come do the launch to come the upper week. So she'll give okay. you more time to get it done. Ah, you know, I felt so much relief. Like, thank God. Like, okay, this yeah. is, I mean, I have so much time to actually do this um, tax that i've been assigned to do and i remember that on when on the day the launch actually came we didn't finish but we sort of like cleaned it up it was mm-hmm. almost done but we just had a few touches here and there that just to make it perfect and on the day of the launch when they asked me to come and speak <laughs> you know the most interesting part about it was my crush was there all my friends were there everybody was there <laughs> they asked me to come and speak and i was <laughs> tears started flowing i was like oh. crying like no man's visa like I, I couldn't hold it in because i felt if you guys know the stress that i've gone through please let me cry <laughs> <laughs> so it was tears of joy I now i've become more it's easy for me to like, i can't you can be telling me something sad and i'm already oh, oh my god i'm already wow. shedding tears i think it's now i feel like there's nothing to be ashamed mm. when it comes to like expressing yourself emotionally I've always been very, very guarded about my emotions. But yeah. as I grow older, I'm like, see, life is just one. Life is short. <laughs> it's just one. So you need to express yourself. And I and I realize that when you do that, like when mm-hmm. you go through trauma, traumatic experiences and when you talk about it and when you allow yourself to feel those emotional turmoil, like mm-hmm. it, it, it might not get solved in the instant, but it gets better. It yeah. gets better now these days. Like I talk about, I find it easier. I mean, it hasn't always been easy, but I talk about my parents separately. It wasn't an easy thing for a child to go through, 
Mm-hmm. But these days I talk about it. Like, okay, this is what happened. This is where well, we move on. It happened. You know, yes, happened. I have to pay What's for under the bridge, you know? And yeah. that 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 has just been my experience so far. Like if I if I'm sad about something, I'll come come and lie down, carry my duvet on my head. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I can cry it out because yeah, yeah. I always okay. tell people cry it out, crying. Don't remain in that state mm-hmm. of the tear. Like it's okay to cry, but don't remain there. Cry and then pack it up and you know and move. move. Okay, okay. So we've talked about the loss of like you know family, like yeah. family the close knit sense. We've talked about loss of um exam and things like that. Is there anything else? After t- I'm not a brute for loss of job. Um, I've grieved for love of uh, um, like something that, that a dream. I've dreamed for a dream that I mm. lost or that got pushed, uh, you know, forward. <laughs> um, in a sense, I've, I've, I've recently in February, um, I lost a cousin who is literally within our age group in his thirties, and he died on his birthday. Oh my god, um, that's so sad. Was, Sorry. Yeah, I know. It was married. Um, and I feel like as much as I was, I won't say I was equipped to grieve. I wasn't equipped to grieve the death of someone that young. And I tried like, you know, getting the words to comfort people that are back in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And I just realized, you know, there, there are no words because I feel like nobody really prepares you for that kind of loss you know yeah. um yeah so I, I feel like I'm still grieving mm. but I also I learned a lot from that my grief process because that's the first time in my life that I would say I hear bad news and I immediately react to it like I immediately reacted to it so before in the past it used to be something happens what's around you just like I shut down, you can tell my face. Mm. Um, but if I'm at work, I still really finish my work. I still close end of business day before I go home. Or before mm. I like send that email that says, Oh, I'm gonna be able to come tomorrow because this happened. Um, but even like I feel like before it used to my truck, my me grieving used to be me going to my house, sitting down. I don't necessarily you know, eat just because I'm sad. Some people do that, and that's a good avenue if that's what helps them. Mm. But I literally lay in my bed for days, and like my windows are closed. Um, I'm not talking to people, and I'm just like just in bed. I don't cry, no. I don't. I just shut down. Like I physically shut down. Um, but recently, I've seen that I'm letting myself actually like process it faster and just. Because I feel like the longer you wait, you push it under and then you keep moving on. But very this, true, very true. I, I I was I cried my cry, like I cried my tears. I was on the phone with friends, like oh my god, guys, I cannot breathe. Um, um, I'm so sad. Like I I found the words to express how I was feeling, which also brings me to a different point of you know. Now I'm beginning to notice how I text people when mm. I'm in a sad place that I don't even know the words for. So last week I lost like a contract um, in a very interesting way, but I did lose the contract. And my friend called me like, oh, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. You know, nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> and literally the next week, because I, I wasn't thinking about it as a loss necessarily for me. But yeah, the next three, four days, I literally found myself, I wasn't eating. I was sleeping longer. My windows are closed. And I was like, hmm, what's wrong? Are you actually sad that this happened? Like, talk to yourself. And I had a full long conversation with myself. Like, I literally wrote out how I was feeling. And then I went back into text messages that I sent to people to see how was I, when people were asking me, how are you? How was I responding? And one word I noticed was long People ask me, oh, how was your day? I said, oh, it was long. And literally mm. yesterday when somebody asked me, how has your week been? I said, oh, it's been a long week. Not necessarily mm. because I was more productive or doing anything hard. It just felt longer because my yeah. heart was breaking for this thing that I had to just want to get over, you know, that face. And it was seeming like it's running forever. Like Too it's long. never going to end. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that was that's something I actually really realized yesterday about my grieving process. And, um, so when it comes to like losing um, someone personally, I think the only person that I've lost personally is my stepmom and my grandmom. Like mm-hmm. I was around when they passed, and sometimes I could I could like. For close family members like that, that you know, I I am always like, okay, so this has happened. Mm-hmm. How do I how do I feel? Yeah, I'm, all, I'm always like, okay, how do I feel about this? This is definitely sad. And sometimes it doesn't. My reaction doesn't come immediately. Maybe yeah. it's usually when it's at the burial or something, or something just triggers it. Like, oh, it's because God, you are in shock. Like you were just like in shock. Like. Exactly. So it's, yeah, it's always a shocking experience. It's always a shocking experience um, for me. I mean, quite recently, one of one of my friends she lost her sister, and this is all someone that I knew, mm-hmm. and she looked up to me, and it was when she told was me a younger news, person. She was a young person. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it was very that was it was very very hurtful. I, w- I was on the phone. I was crying. Like uh, it was just too much. I was like, how how could this thing happen? Like, why mm-hmm. why would this happen? And sometimes when I see people like probably on Twitter or Facebook and they post that, oh, somebody young died. I'm just like, sometimes I it's not like I don't see it, but I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. And there's this frustration that comes with knowing that whoever you lost, you it's you can't really get them back. And sometimes you don't even have the right words to say to say yeah. those kind of moments, and yeah. you just oh, okay. Well, even if you say it is well, what is well? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. those kind of situations, you really, you really can't uh, predict when it will end. You just have to. It's just time. Like, yeah. Okay. And the truth of matter is, moment things like that, it will always, there will always be a trigger, and you just have oh, to yeah. have to learn how to okay balance it. Okay, when this comes, how am I mm-hmm. going to cope and all that? Because you never really get over the loss of a loved one, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, and and that's fair. I think for me, what I'm learning with losing people, because sometimes when I lose, when I say losing people, it's, it's to death, and and there are some relationships, you know, end of a relationship that you have to mourn the plans mm. that you guys have together, <laughs> um, so like, friendships. You know, friendships you have to just be like, oh my god, I really yeah. love you, I love our friendship. But it's not healthy you know, anymore, and we have to go our ways. I think something that I've that I've I've um I've learned over the past couple of years is to like give my feelings a name, like literally tell myself, how are you actually feeling? Are you feeling sad right now? You know, are you is it that you're missing them? Is your sadness because you're missing them, or is it because you know you guys were supposed to travel together and that didn't happen? Or you know, if it's a relationship, what what is it about them like? that is causing you to be sad or however way you're feeling like just you know give it a name and then tackle that name that has helped me um over not overcome but helped me grieve better and just healthier because i have a name i have a reason and it just helps me on it helps me process it easier um yeah i know you you something else that that i've grieved is the loss of a job covid hmm you know, corporate America, you, you have money, you have, <laughs> you know, this, this, that. Um, I know the doors. Then, exa- exactly. <laughs> and then COVID happened and then I lost what I thought was a title to me. Mm. Um, and sometimes I still find myself questioning if I'm good enough. Um, sometimes I still find myself at, asking why did it let me go? Was that that easily disposable? Like, was I that easily replaceable? Of course, I would never know because they made their decisions and it mm-hmm. just happened to be me. Um, but I still, I still, I, I still grieve over that job that gave me so much, but was taken away so suddenly that I, yeah. you know, I didn't say coming. Like I literally did not say coming. Um, but yeah. So uh, when it comes to a job, I wouldn't say I've been fired before, but mm-hmm. I've been passed over for like a promotion. Mm-hmm. And that I feel that that one is equally painful, especially when yeah. you put in your all your best. Yeah, you know, you're just like you're digging it. You know, everyone knows how hardworking you are. And I remember, I remember that 
at that job, everyone knew me. Customers knew me. Every customer wanted to talk with me, you know, mm-hmm. let me do their job for them. And like, it was so, so exciting. And um, when it came for the time to be promoted, and it was somebody else who who they had brought in and I had I had the opportunity of even training at one oh time. Oh my god. So you can imagine the kind of like <sighs> Yeah. The F one I was <laughs> <laughs> I was literally shocked. And yeah. it hovered, to be honest, like it hovered over me uh, for quite some time. And it was very difficult for me to even give it my best at my mm-hmm. job again because mm-hmm. I was just like, how could they do this to me? Like, I've done my job so well. And the most annoying part of it was the hypocritical statements that came from some of the line managers that would come yeah. like, um, Rachel, you're not doing this like the way you used to. I said, so you know that I used to work before. Exactly. You guys made a decision, passed me over and, yeah. you know, and whatnot. So, yeah, that was really such a hurtful period for me. And I feel like people didn't. And what made me much, much hurtful was the fact that some of my other colleagues will come will come to meet me and they'll say, Richard, what happened? <laughs> Did you offend them? <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think sometimes, right, when we hurt or when we're grieving mm. or when something traumatic happens, it's the questions, like people not like I said earlier, we're not equipped to handle some some things. And yeah. like it's just like maybe don't ask questions you know, or maybe don't say the wrong words. Like, people asking you what happened. Auntie, do I know? I don't know. I'm as shocked as you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or, or people saying, oh, um, oh, your cousin is in a better place. Auntie, it was only 30-something. It should be mm. here, enjoying this life. You know, mm. or the little girl that was lost. Yeah. She, she picks up on risk with her friends. Mm. And it's just, you know, I don't know. That's something we have to, we all have to learn at some point, like how to show up for people who are grieving in any way, you know, not just the big ways, the little ones as well, you know. Um, my friend recently lost a pet. Um, and I was just like, oh my God, that must be so sad. Because she's had this cat for 14 years. Okay, that's a long yeah. Okay, and okay. People, <laughs> people were like, oh no, it's just a cat. I was just like, no. She's like, grown okay. attached to it. Exactly, you know? 14 long years. And it was also so sudden that they weren't expecting it. You, you mm. can't. Yeah, I just, I feel, I, I cannot imagine having to do that. Mm. Yeah, because this is some sort of friendship. To, it's, it's, I mean, to her, that's probably a family. And yeah. I think when it comes to like griefing over like relationships, probably um, maybe it's a romantic relationship or cordial mm-hmm. relationship between friends. Sometimes people feel they have to necessarily like be sad and maybe they cut off like a relationship and they are not feeling that sadness and they feel like something yeah. is wrong. No. You don't, you, it doesn't... Um, I, so somebody said something about how that... Um, the fact that probably you and somebody broke up uh, or your friendship ended, it doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily mean that there's not there's something wrong with the two of you. It mm-hmm. just basically means that, okay, this thing is not making progress in the direction that we want exactly. it to go. And all good things, some of them, not all, <laughs> must come to an end. We, all, we yeah. don't want all the good things <laughs> to end in our lives. So, so some good things might, might just need... So that's gotten to his expiry date. Okay, fine. Let yeah. us you know we tried it didn't work out we moved and it doesn't make either you or them like a bad person at all yeah yeah okay so some things that has helped me or like process my grief like i said Mm -hmm. before like um i name i name or put a face to what i'm feeling um i'm always i try to be kind to myself you Mm -hmm. know sometimes if all i want to do is just lay in bed and sleep or just like stay in bed all day I try as much as I can to on some, if it's getting too long, then I get out. Like I also, I, I ginger myself to go do other things. Um, I try to be kind to myself, you know, in places where um, you, maybe it was my fault, you know, maybe, mm. or maybe I think it is my fault. Um, I still, I don't take, I don't, I take my, I take responsibility for my actions, 
but I don't say hurtful things to myself or about myself or about the things that I did that eventually didn't go ha- as a plan as I planned, right? I just like I try to I'm I'm as an adult now, I'm more picky about the words I use or the sentences I use in my head to describe mm-hmm. myself or speak to myself. Um for sure. So I'm, I'm, I try to be kind to myself. Um, and also, like, I try to be intentional about my healing. You know, mm-hmm. yes, it's okay to grieve. Very, very important. Is, yeah, yeah. You know, just feel what you feel. Like, you, my parents weren't together as well. And when I noticed that, you know, as an adult, I, I, I still had issues, like, trust issues with, from being from a broken home. My dear, I carry my ass to therapy. Like, <laughs> oh, my, help me figure out my feelings. Because, you know... I needed to ask some questions that I didn't know I needed to be asked. And that, that is what my therapy helps me. My therapist helped me, you know, she asks us questions and I'm like, okay, wait, let me think about it. It cannot possibly be that. Or, hmm, I didn't know about that. But, you know, thank you for putting it that way. So, like, be intentional. If that's going to therapy, if that's finding, you know, be more committed to your religion, if it's you, mm. you know, being open with the universe, whatever your way is to connect and just mm. heal yourself. Be, be absolutely inten- intentional with your healing, not just emotionally, but also like physically. Um, you know, go on a date by yourself, go on the walk if you can afford very, very you important. Want, you know, go for the relaxing massage, take a run, you know, go on a run. Some people say running clears their mind and their heads, you know, mm. just find what works for you and just and try it out. What how what are some things that you do to help you process your grief? Yeah, I think I, I I totally totally agree with you. I mean, after my last um, breakup, and somebody one of my friends asked me, "How do you feel?" and I told her relieved. Mm. And you know th- that was the first time that I would confidently say like I feel relieved. Yeah, because the default answer will so- sometimes be like oh, I'm sad. I wish it probably worked. And yes, I, I wish it probably worked, but at that time, I'm like, I'm relieved that, mm-hmm. okay, this has happened and this is done and over with. And when it happened, I started to like question myself, okay, what did I do wrong? Where mm-hmm. did we go wrong? What would have probably happened, done, or what should we have done to probably have made it better? And how how can it be, you know, how, how can it change in mm-hmm. the future? if I ever do get in, into another relationship and not have to experience traumatizing uh, like, um, events again. Because usually when it comes to confrontations and arguments and all those kind of things, based on like the kind of background that I have, I don't mm-hmm. like them. Like I'm always like, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Any argument, please take me away from here. Take I me out. Like, <laughs> 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 because I feel like I've, I've seen too much of it already. Yeah. And as an adult, I, you, I don't, I don't wanna... like, I guess yeah. what I had over you. <laughs> and I think yeah. that one made me run away from law, like not studying law, because I, see, I don't have energy. I've seen too much. <laughs> I don't want to come and be arguing with somebody in court over who is right or not. Yeah. Right. I don't have time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, like you said, naming, naming, naming the problem or naming the situation. And my yeah. own was, the feeling was, I felt really f- moving on let's 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 try to build up and develop ourselves and grow from this experience learn from it and make sure that okay whoever is going to meet us again in the future is going to meet us in a better state of mind Mm -hmm. than Mm -hmm. we were before so yeah yeah okay well i guess we are done thank you so much for coming rich i really appreciate it i hope you enjoyed the the episode Ah, of course. Why not? I like, I like, so I like talking. I think we <laughs> exactly. <was> soon. <laughs> exactly. We shall be back. <laughs> All right. Um, oh well, my thank God. You well, well, thank you so much once again, Rachel, for coming. I really appreciate it. No problem. You enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, share with friends and families. And of course, follow us on all our social media platforms. Sense and Runs on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Whatever it is you want to do, whoever it is you want to become, all you have to do is start.